Hi guys, it's Nancy, and I'm excited to share with you that um, it was announced like last year sometime that House Mouse was going to be retiring. Well, they got picked up by Spellbinders. Yay! Another reason I love Spellbinders. So this is one of the new stamps that's available at Spellbinders. I'll put the link down below for you guys. Um, and it has two sentiments, especially for you, and you are special. And these are red rubber cling mounted stamps. So you can use a stamping block, but I'm going to use my Misty, and because they're red rubber you're going to take out your foam pad and this is just a piece of um, like marker paper for alcohol ink coloring and I'm going to put my stamp pretty much in the middle there this is cut down to five and a half by four and a quarter and I will um, cut it down more if I need to and see it's cling mounted so it will stick and then I'm just going to use an alcohol safe um, ink so you can use um, Hero Arts, Memento, um, Gina K, Amalgam. You just want to make sure that the ink is completely dry and you do need a special ink like this when you are doing alcohol ink coloring because you don't want this ink to bleed. I'm not the best at coloring, so I thought I would get these to kind of practice a little bit. And I'm gonna mix Spectrum Noir markers, um, Copic alcohol markers, and I have a couple of Olo alcohol markers. So use what you have, you can mix them up. All right, I'm gonna ink that one more time. It's the only thing I don't like about these inks is you get to stamp them a few times to get a really dark impression. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm not gonna stamp it again. And we're gonna take that out. All right, now I'm gonna um, take my heat tool and dry that, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. By the way, this stamp is called Bouquet For You. There are six house mouse stamps being released. They're gonna be $14.99 each, or you can get all six in the house mouse collection uh, bundle for $89.94. So if you know somebody who is a big collector, I know these are kind of like, you know, a collector's edition for certain people. They may want to go get them. I'll put the links down below for you guys. So these are Olo alcohol markers. Um, they're on the Spellbinders website. I only have this set. Um, but what's neat about them is you basically have two colors in a marker. So it's like a half a marker. But apparently they're cartridges. So see, you can see here, are very easy to exchange when it runs out of ink, you just exchange the cartridge and you can attach any marker. So let's say I wanted this dark green with this dark green. So now I have G17 and G8, YG87 on the same marker. Then I can have this lighter green with this yellow. So you can mix and match it any way you want. But you basically get eight colors in a four pack. So I thought that was pretty neat. And then I also have the blending marker. We'll see how I do here. But I thought these would be good on some of the greenery here. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see here and see what I get. And these have a brush nib. But again, I'll be bringing in a couple of different brands and I do mix and match my color pencils and my markers so you get the most bang for your buck when you can use all of your supplies so don't ever feel like you have to use one brand I am not great with coloring so this should kind of help me stretch myself a little bit I just want to see what these different colors are And I just thought that I would bring you guys along for the little coloring journey here. I know I don't do a lot of it on my channel, but every once in a while it is kind of relaxing and soothing to do something that I don't normally do.
and these are floral so you really can't you can't really mess them up because it's nature right who are we to say what's right and what's wrong Just adding a little lighter green then I'm gonna go and add a little darker green and just add green everywhere <laughs> okay let's work on him I'm gonna bring in some warm grays and I think these are all Copics so I have Copic Chow 1 W1 W3 W00 and W5. So he's going to have kind of a brownish gray color. I'm going to start with the lightest, which is W00. And just kind of give him this all over gray color. And with alcohol markers, the more you put down, really, the more it gets saturated the easier it is for the for the colors to blend. So I like to take my lightest and just kind of color all over everything cuz it's it's easy to darken everything up. It's not so easy to lighten up. So I know it doesn't look like he has some color there, but he does. I'm going to add some very light peach peach in his ears here. R01 pinkish vanilla. Just a little bit. See, just that little color. Then I'm going to go in with the next one, which is W1. And just darken him up. And, and I'll just do it in layers. This is W3. I'm just kind of doing circular on his body. I'm not being real kind of particular on his fur. And I don't even know if I need W5. Maybe we'll just add a little bit of this, but I don't think he really needs it. a little bit of shadow bottom of his feet the bottom of his tail not too much see I think he looks pretty good I don't want to add too much sometimes you don't need a whole bunch now these flowers I don't know what kind of flowers they are but to me I'm gonna imagine they're a little purpley Let's see here if I can add a little bit more green See, that looked a little too a little too brown. So we're going to go back in with this green.
Okay, let's get to the flowers. So I'm going to start kind of like I did with... Let's see here. BB13, B63, BB11... All right, let me try these colors here. And I usually will scribble on a piece of scrap paper off to the side here. Just to see which is the lightest. Okay, so I go like this. This is B63. And again, I'm going to kind of give all of the flowers this first one. And don't be, I know a lot of people are intimidated by alcohol marker coloring. Um, it definitely takes some practice to get used to it. I do not consider myself a person who is expert at coloring. I know a lot of people color amazingly and can color and make these look realistic. That's not my goal, okay? My goal is never to make it look realistic. My goal is to get it colored and to look like I made it, like a card maker made it, okay? I'm not an expert artist. I do this to make cards, to send out to you guys, friends, family, loved ones, and just have them appreciate that I took some time out of my day to color this. And when it came time to give it away, I thought about them and I thought that they would appreciate it. So don't ever feel like it's not good enough because to the person you're gifting this to, they're going to love it no matter what. They're going to love it. Even if you make mistakes, even if it's outside the lines, they're going to love the fact that you thought about them and you tried. Right? So never, ever get down on yourself and thinking, I can't do that. I can't color like so-and-so. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, I think not trying is worse than trying and not doing it and not doing it well because... If you don't even try, you gave up on yourself, right? And if somebody critiques you for what you did, hand them the markers, the stamp, and say, okay, you do better than me. Because I don't think it's right for somebody to critique you when this is coming from your heart. Um, that was B63. Now we're going in with BV11. And again, all the light layers are laid down, so... Just going to go in and darken this up, right? Add my shadow layers, which would be in between the petals. It would be um, any of the bottom petals, anything. And the artist has drawn a lot of that in. There's kind of like this speckle work. You see that? So you just got to be conscious of that speckle work shadows that they put in and I'm just using some light flicking motions going from the bottom and just adding that in does not have to be perfect these markers will blend into themselves so you're not going to see as long as the colors are close enough to each other you're not going to see um, any marks like brush strokes or anything because these markers go in they die into the paper look how pretty that looks already and they do tend to dry back a little bit so don't feel like hey that doesn't look good I need to trash it and start over give it a moment to dry and again as it layers look at how pretty that looks already it will take on a life of its own all right, and then um, BV13, I'm just going to use very little of this. Again, just in my shadow areas here where I know at the bottom of the petals, the bottom of the bouquets, if there's a petal in the back.
And if you're intimidated by coloring, I say um, start with color pencils. Color pencils, I don't know why, were much easier for me. I think because they're maybe a little easier to blend. All right, I'm gonna go back in with that B63, and that's my lightest, or not my lightest, is it? And I'm just going to kind of go back in and just blend everything together. And you'll see it just kind of melds and, and just goes together. Your lights will stay light. Your darks will stay dark. But they'll, they'll just harmonize and look really pretty together. Now you don't want to over ink because if you over ink, you'll get white spots. And you want a good marker paper that's not going to bleed too much. Um, you're going to have some saturation of ink. But you'll notice that that hasn't gone through too much. Um, and you want that ink to kind of stay where you want it to stay. You don't want it bleeding outside the lines. And you want to use a good alcohol-friendly ink when you're stamping it. You don't want to use a pigment ink. So there are specific inks that you need for stamping. And like I said, either Memento, um, Tuxedo Black, I believe the name of it is, Gina K Amalgam, Hero Arts Intense Black. Those are the ones that I would say try out. Make sure you heat set them. That makes a huge difference, especially I noticed for me. All right, now I think he needs a little bit more gray on his backside. So I'm gonna add a little bit more gray with the W5. Just feel like he needed a shadow there. And I think this is done. You could certainly color in, you know, the sky. I'm going to add a little bit of dirt on the ground for him. This is E35. This one is E59. But I don't think we need to add much more to this. Let's see, do we have some li lilac colored paper out of the Spellbinders paper? We do. Lilac Blossom. Do you think that looks good? Maybe we should go with a green because that's kind of a bluish purple. Oh, I think we're going to go with that one. That is Rainforest. So, have a card base. And we have two sentiments we can choose from. We have, you are special and especially for you. Let me cut all this down and let's matte layer these. And then we'll put a card together. And that, you guys, took me only 20 minutes to make that, which is not very long. It was very easy to color. Let's stop having the marker fall on me. <laughs> trim this rainforest cardstock down and if you have not tried the spellbinders cardstock it is really good quality okay, so it looks like i have two half pieces already cut here so i want these to be five and a half by four and a quarter all right that one's five and a quarter by four and a quarter 
I think the other one is the same. So then we're going to go five and a quarter by four. I don't know if I can cut this down to five by three and three quarters. Let me see here. Nope, that's going to be too close. All right, so we're just going to have to cut a new piece of paper, which is okay. And, of course, you can run these through embossing folders if you wanted to give it a little extra oomph. Maybe we'll do that. So we're going to cut this piece down to five and a half by four and a quarter. So it is our matte layer. You're really not going to see but just a little bit of that green. So I don't even think I need to use too much of an embossing folder. Okay. And then we're going to cut this piece down to five and a quarter by four. figure out which sentiment and stamp that one on real quick. I think we're going to do especially for you. And they're cling mounted so they will stick to your stamping blocks. And I have that lined up with the lines and I'm going to grab my black Versamark ink. Now, whenever I have a new stamp, I want to stamp that off again just on a piece of scrap paper to make sure that it stamps nicely, which that one does. Perfect. Now that was a pigment ink, so I just want to be careful and let that dry before I smudge it. I'm going to grab my Spellbinders tape runner. And let's tape the green to my card base. base here okay well this is where these scissors come in cuts it like butter look at that beautiful all right perfect okay spellbinder scissors to the rescue all the time for me lately. And I know I have some of those really pretty sequins. Here we go. These are the purple opalescents. Perfect. Perfect. So we're going to add a few of those. Let me grab my little sticky stick. Where's my sticky stick? I'm just going to add a couple, just three. And 
and they come in a couple different sizes. Uh, it's like the perfect color. Just a couple of sequins to finish that off. And again, this one is called Bouquet for You. House Mouse now carried over it Spellbinders. Stamped it with an alcohol-friendly ink. Then colored it with alcohol markers. Glued it on some Spellbinders Rainforest card stock. And then just added some purple opalescent sequins and it just matches beautifully let me know what you think down in the comments if you are interested i will put the link down for you in the description of everything that i've used thanks for watching please give this video a thumbs up before you leave and consider subscribing to my channel bye guys